Hi, Ganeshwar. How are you? Hello, sir. Hi, and you, sir? I'm, I'm good too. Thank you for asking. Can you tell us something about yourself? My name is Ganeshwar Chauhan, basically from um, Madhya Pradesh, and currently live in Pune. Okay. My graduation is completed in 2017, MIT College, Gondia. Mm -hmm. uh, after uh, completed, I'm doing work in electronic sector mm -hmm. in three years. In between the COVID 2020, I quit the job. Then it started 2022 in software testing course. Okay. Oh. Right. So, how many yeah. years of experience you have in testing? Testing, no experience. I am fresher. Okay. You are fresher for testing. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. So, you are learning both manual testing as well as automation testing, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Okay. So, can you tell me what do you mean by polymorphism and what is the meaning of abstraction? What is the difference between two? Polymorph polymorphism means uh, runtime, two types of poly polymorphism runtime mm -hmm. and compile time polymorphism. Mm -hmm. Abstraction is a class. Right. So, what is the difference between the two? Uh, different. Mm -hmm. uh, no idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, can you tell me the difference between abstraction and encapsulation? Mm. No, sir, no. Mm -hmm. No issues, no issues. See, this is a mock interview. Yeah. Even if you don't know the answer of okay. the question, that is absolutely fine. But okay. whichever questions that are being asked over here, definitely you will, you can expect those questions in an interview in some of the companies, okay? Yeah. Now, abstraction yes. is the method of hiding the unwanted information, right? Yes. Hiding the, uh, so, so let's say if you are talking to someone on the phone, so what is happening behind the scenes? So that information is not uh, taught to you, like uh, known to you, like for example, some network thing would be happening at the back end. But whenever you receive a phone or whenever you send someone a message, that is a, that comes as an example of abstraction itself. We are hiding the details, yeah. internal details from the end user, right? Okay. Whereas encapsulation is a method to hide the data in a single entity or unit, you can say, right? And in that, yeah. they will also include the method also to protect information from outside, right? So this is a very thin line of difference, but yes, difference is there between encapsulation and, and okay. abstraction. Okay, so yeah. this is there. Okay. Now, what do you mean by object and what do you mean by class? Object. Uh, object, you after create the class. First of all, you create the class, then create up object. Up. Mm -hmm. up, class, class means you create uh, you uh, so, I am not defined. <laughs> okay, no issues. So I'll tell you. Yes. See, basically, when you say class, so that is nothing but it is a yeah. uh, template or you can say blueprint yeah. for an object. Yeah, yeah. Right? Object. Right. Yes. So first, you will be creating a class and then you will be yes. creating an object. So object is nothing yeah. but an instance of a class, you can tell. Right. Second, very important difference between the two is class is a logical entity, while object is a physical entity. Physical. Right. And whenever you cre create a class, so there, there does not happen like, you know, you allocate some memory to that particular class, which is created. Okay. But when you create an object, so the object, the memory is been allocated to that particular object whenever it is created. Okay. So this is the difference between the two class and objects. Objects. Okay. What do you know about agile? Yes, sir. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Agile so can, is a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Agile is a iterative and iterational model. Iterative model of repeat again and again in, in implementation. Impl mm -hmm. Implementation is possible. Uh, Agile is a some framework. Agile is doing the some principal work. It's like uh, mm, up, mm, Agile is uh, release the small pieces of uh, small pieces of the product and communication is good in team and uh, requirement changing it allowed uh, that's all mm -hmm. okay anything else you would like to add for agile No idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you tell me the difference between the agile and the waterfall model? Agile waterfall model is uh, uh, um, requirement changing is not allowed in in the phase, but, mm -hmm. but uh, agile model is requirement changing is allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, waterfall model. Uh, Mm, preferred by small project, mm -hmm. but uh, agile is preferred by all all project. Mm -hmm. uh, water for model uh, is advantage uh, is a step by step process or chances is less in in some the bug. So, but that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, whenever it comes to agile model you know so you can tell that agile is a methodology which follows the incremental approach right yes whereas waterfall is a one which follows sequential design process so after requirement you will be doing analysis and all those things so that would be in a sequence right yes and there was one point that you had mentioned that agile is preferred by many projects right so that is a good thing like and you can also add in that particular point like agile can be considered as a collection of many different projects while yeah. while in waterfall the development will be completed as one single project right single project. in agile we are having various sprints various iterations we are breaking yeah. the whole you know feature or epic to be developed into those particular sprints or cycles whereas in the waterfall there are distinct phases involved, right? The various phases are there, which has been taken care of. Okay. So that is the uh, difference between agile and waterfall. And again, the risk is more in the waterfall, right? While in the agile, the risk is less, but in the waterfall method, the process is always straightforward, right? It is sequential. Yeah. So project yeah. manager or business analyst needs to play a very vital role they have a very essential role in that while in agile all the team members are involved right so all it is the responsibility that is shared by throughout the team members right so there is there would be project manager business analyst would be there but yes the there would be a sharing responsibility between the all the team members okay is this clear Yes, sir. Okay. Any any other doubt, Gyaneshwar? No. Okay. Now, how many types of weight are there? In uh, two types case? of weight. Sorry. Two types of weight: implicit weight or okay. explicit weight. Right. What is the difference between implicit weight and explicit weight? Implicit weight means, uh, sir. Uh, I remember, but no, no, my mind. Okay, no worries. So let this be an open question for the people who are watching this yeah. video. The difference between implicit weight and explicit weight, they would be commenting on the in the comments or comment section of this video. Okay. Now, what is the difference between severity and priority? Severity means the seriousness of the product and priority mm -hmm. means importance of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, 
सीरिटी इन बेसिकली फोर टाइप्स ब्रोकन क्रिटिकल मेजर एंड माइनर प्रायोरिटी मीन हाई मीडियम एंड लो ओके कैन यू गिव मी एन एग्जांपल ऑफ अ डिफेक्ट विद हाई सीवेरिटी एंड लो प्रायोरिटी हाई सीवेरिटी एंड लो प्रायोरिटी login mhm username and password okay yes sir right so can you explain the defect on the login page uh, no idea okay let see uh at least you can give some try for these questions yeah it would be good in a real time interview also even if you don't know the answer yeah. of the question what you can do is you can tell to the interviewer uh, sir or ma'am ji i am not knowing the exact answer of this question but i would like to give a try so this is the attitude yeah. that they would like in an interview okay so okay. if you are uh, referring to an example of a defect with high severity and low priority so you can give an example of any particular page or link which is not working or it is giving some uh, yeah. error right so or some exception it is throwing now it is high severity right because it is not working but priority will be low because that is not been much used by the end user or the end user is not navigating to that particular page very often right yeah. so high severity low priority now can you tell me the example of low severity and high priority why is it worse uh, low severity low severity have no idea mm -hmm. okay low severity and high priority is nothing but a uh, kind of a defect in which the branding or the logo is not been displayed properly on the website right so that is low severity the business is not been impacted but the priority will be high because it is uh, impacting the branding of that particular company or website you can say okay what do you mean by regression testing and what is retesting regression testing after fixing the bug then mm. start the testing that is regression testing regression testing uh, doing because uh, not impacting any uh, existing functionality yeah uh, retesting it after fixing the bug to start testing the that is retesting Okay, what is the purpose behind doing regression testing? Regression testing. Hmm. Regression testing doing because uh, uh, existing functionality is not impacted. Hmm. Not uh, that. What What does not impact uh, existing functionality? Can you please elaborate? Hmm. no okay so over here the purpose of regression testing is that the new code changes should not have any side effects to the existing functionalities right so that is regression testing while retesting is done on the basis of defect fixes right okay now let's say if you have to uh perform both the testing regression testing and retesting which one would you prefer first to perform regression testing or retesting uh, regression testing why so because uh, after fixing bug hmm. first start the regression testing hmm. then after regression testing start the retesting okay is it not possible that first we should perform retesting 
let's say the defect fixes which have been done that let us verify those first and then we can do the regression testing yeah right What is data driven testing? Data uh, data driven testing means uh, you um, example for test engine, test engine framework, hmm. doing a data driven test. Test engine is not related to data driven testing. Okay, what is the generic meaning of? data driven framework oh sorry data driven testing no idea mm -hmm. so data driven testing is nothing but it is a kind of a software testing method in which the test data is been stored in table or it can be stored in an excel format right yeah. so what how how would this help the tester this it allows testers to, you know, uh, write or develop a single test script that can execute the test for multiple test data from one particular input file. Let's say it can be CSV or Excel file, right? And then we can expect that particular test output based on the input that we are providing. So it is data driven. So we the data has been driven via this testing. Okay, it is also known as parameterized testing. So in an interview, you might also get, yeah. So you might also get like, it is also, param what is parameterization testing? So it is one and the same thing. Yes. Okay. Okay, Gyaneshwar, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Sir, uh, in my education, uh, after doing working hmm. job, uh, two years ago, 2017 and 21. How to explain to the interviewer what hmm. is the reason? About okay. okay, so was there any personal reason that you had to go for a gap? Personal reason, no, sir. Reason is COVID 19. COVID 19. So because of COVID, you, yeah. did, you were not able to do any job like that. Yeah. Okay, so you can tell upfront that, uh, you know, the situations were, as uh, you all know, that it's it was a COVID-19 situation, the lockdown was there. So, the, so you could not, uh, you know, get any kind of job at that particular time, right? See, honesty is always the best policy. You should always, uh, yeah. you know, tell them upfront whatever ha has happened. And that is not in your hands. That is something that the entire world has been facing it, right? Had faced it. Yeah. So there are situations, you know, at times in the life that we cannot be, you know, put responsible for the same. Let's say in 2007 or 2008 when recession came up, right? So that was not in yeah. our hands. This was also not in our hands, right? So whatever has happened, has happened, right? So you can tell them, see, that was a, a phase of my life that I didn't have job. I applied for many jobs, but due to the COVID-19, uh, I was getting rejected. Like maybe the employers yeah. were not having uh, projects or maybe they were not uh, open to hire new people at that particular time because it was a tough phase for everyone. Right? So yeah. you can tell them like that. And it was for two years. So, right. And meanwhile, after giving this particular explanation, you can also tell what you did personally at your home. Let's say you went through the software testing concepts. You tried to yeah. understand these manual testing concepts. You tried to do some automation, hands-on experience and yes. automations, learn Selenium and all these things. So you can tell. So I was trying for the job, I was giving the interviews, I was sharing my CV to various job portals. And then at the same time, I was also upgrading, updating myself like that. Yeah. Right. So this is how you have to explain them. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ganeshwar, anything else? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Ganeshwar. It was nice talking to you. And all the best for your career. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you.